Hey guys, it's Albert from Albert Thoughts. I'm so excited today to test out the Insta360 ONE X2. So this is a fairly new device, but not to a new space, which is 360 videos. And I wasn't a fan of 360 cameras, but given its potential and its capabilities and what it can do, I thought it was a better deal than actually holding onto my GoPro Hero 9. But today I decided to pull the trigger to buy the Insta360 ONE X2 because I don't really touch my GoPro Hero 9. And I'm gonna talk about the differences between my experience with the GoPro Hero 9 and the Insta360. We're going to one of my favorite hikes in LA and show you the capabilities of a 360 camera. We're finally here at my favorite hike of LA. Just a glimpse of LA traffic here is what it looks like right now. It's Friday, so not, not really surprised that there are a ton of cars. Now, unfortunately, I actually did a whole review while I was walking, hoping this was a vlogging camera, but to my surprise, the AirPod connectivity didn't really work as expected. To start, let's talk about the three pros and two cons, starting with the three pros. Pro number one is the software and its creative mode. So first of all, I really enjoy the app. I really like how they put everything together and make it kind of easier for the user to actually edit videos, which is super useful if you want to just edit videos and share it online or do something really fast. I think the way they develop this application is really half of the product. You're buying this camera, but you're also buying into that community, buying into that software that give you, which is for free on your Mac OS or iPhone or Android. It's useful because there's a lot of tutorials on there and there's a lot of people sharing their really creative ideas and creative process through utilizing this camera. They have a really wide set of features called Shot Labs, which is very interesting because you've probably seen a lot of these videos either on TikTok or Instagram where people utilize the creative freedom to actually make really cool videos. I did test out some of these features and I have to say they're very easy to use I'm very easy to shoot so I don't really anticipate myself actually shooting a lot of these videos for on the go I mainly bought this camera for its biggest feature which leads me to number two which is it's super fun to use and before I go on I just want to say this video is not sponsored but if you are interested in checking out the Insta360 definitely check out the links below for specs and features and pricing depending on your area so moving on to the fun and ease of use so Previously, I mentioned the application, the software is actually half of what you're buying into this product. And the other half, which is the product itself, is actually also very easy to use. There's only two buttons on the whole camera. There's two sliders on the cameras in addition to those two buttons, which is to actually charge the device and to swap out the battery. And inside the battery housing, there is a micro SD port. So they're all tucked away under this nice waterproof housing. Going back to number two, which is the easiness and the fun part of this camera really encourages you to go out and shoot different kinds of video to expand your creative mindset, which, you know, compared to my GoPro Hero 9, it was a little bit more limited. I had the option to purchase a GoPro Hero Max lens mod, which makes it essentially one of these cameras so you can have a horizontal lock or you can have a wider field of view. But I felt like having to go out to purchase another $100 accessory that puts a weird bulge on your action camera doesn't make sense. Might as well just get the Hero Max. They might be adopting the Insta360 ONE R modular concept, who knows. The other thing that connects to the ease of use is actually the, the startup time. So I did notice that the GoPro Hero 9 had a pretty laggy interface, maybe it was just my unit, but turning it on either from the fast switch to actually start recording or turning on the camera at all felt a little bit sluggish for a camera that was designed in 2020. And for the Insta360, for example, if you press the button, it wakes up almost instantly and is ready to go. I found that the interface is actually very intuitive. It's very easy to use in a sense that when you pick it up, you already know how to use the camera itself. And they strip away a lot of the things that you don't really need. And I say that because some products have complex designs that make it very hard to find that one functionality that you need to change in the camera itself. This camera also shoots log, which is one of my favorite features in any camera. You can color correct it, but if you don't want to, they have vivid mode and they have standard mode. So you do have a wide array of selections if you do want to change or color correct this in the future. Number three is versatility. And I touched a lot of points 
before on versatility of this camera. But I want to draw attention to two points. The first point is that it follows you. So if you don't really know what 360 cameras do is you can actually shoot a video and edit the perspectives however you want to do it after the fact. And that's super important because that essentially puts a whole camera crew in your pocket and that's how they're marketing this camera. So pretty smart and that really differentiates it from a lot of the cameras out there such as the GoPro. Now the GoPro does have a GoPro Hero Max but based off of my experience with the GoPro Hero 9 and the GoPro Hero 8, I wanted to change systems to see what other manufacturers such as Insta360 are doing with their action cameras. I am pretty surprised by how much they're actually putting onto the market and improving onto their previous products versus what GoPro is doing. And I do believe GoPro is actually trying to push boundaries, but they're also taking it very cautiously because they are a publicly traded company. So they have to ensure that their products are great, but they have to make a second iteration so that they can continue with their earning reports. Now that is just my opinion of how I see it from a consumer standpoint. It could be totally wrong. So these three pros all wrap up to that biggest question of can I buy this camera to replace all of my cameras? When I bought this camera that was my hope and unfortunately that hope was not fulfilled. So the two cons that I found about this camera at first is the hardware. So there's a number of added features, most of them very welcoming, like the bigger OLED screen, bigger battery, but the sensor remains the same, although a bit sharper in some reviews. I would have wanted a little bit more resolution so that when I crop, which is expected, it wouldn't be as low res. The waterproofing ad is very welcoming, although I still wouldn't bring it into the ocean without a dive case, which costs an extra $80. The other thing is, they did put in a much bigger battery, but the battery life in my first initial test, and this is a post-production model, wasn't that good. So it makes me think maybe the first generation was actually terrible, so they turned terrible into not so good. And the thing is, most of this camera is actually battery, which could also be a bad thing because they can't put a bigger battery, so they have to go back and change some of their software. The last part of the first con is the fact that this thing is so easy to break. So sadly, while I was filming a really cool time lapse, this happened. This happened. See that little nick right there? Stones and rocks. <laughs> so unfortunately, um, it fell, but fortunately, I do have Insta360 Care, which which is a $39 service. I don't know if that covers this thing. I have to go back and research. But this is day one of actually using it outside. And the first thing that it hit was the lens, and the lens did unfortunately crack. And the second con is the connectivity and glitches. As I was saying before, I wanted this to be the perfect camera that I wanted to use for vlogging. And I know from my past experiences, these types of cameras don't really have the best microphones. And I'm okay with that because they advertise that they can take AirPods. So I was really excited and I didn't do my research. I bought it, I would connect it to my AirPods, and I was left with disappointment. Here's a video of what it actually sounded like on my AirPods too. Another, another really big selling point for me at least, these devices, microphones. Not sure. So after fiddling with the AirPod mode, uh, I actually gave up and I'm actually recording this with just the 360 directional mic on the camera itself. So I did notice a lot of YouTubers, they actually purchased that uh, little equipment where you can actually use your own lav mic uh, and you flip it here either with the wireless go. These are issues connecting my AirPods. So I keep getting this audio error. Please try again. Now I know that AirPods Pro actually give you a better audio quality, but I heard from a lot of YouTubers that it's still not as good as what you would expect if you connected your AirPods to your iPhone. So the other thing that I wish the mobile app could do is to accept your micro SD cards from an external reader. I tried this on Android and iOS with no success, so the only route for mobile devices is to leave your camera turned on while editing over the device's wireless connections. This may eat up your battery, but a hack that I found is to take out the battery while leaving your device plugged in to save your battery. So overall, I think this is an almost perfect camera. It's really well designed, it's really well executed. The app is amazing, but there are some things that make it almost perfect to a sense where it is and will be that secondary device that you use for BTS footage. Thank you so much for watching this video. Definitely check out my Instagram for more footages I will upload with this camera. I'll see you guys in my next thought.